All right, guys, so wrapping up, we're going to do some cleanup. You notice in each project we have an actual amount that is pledged of this much um, that isn't being updated, nor the 30 days thing is. Uh, it's dynamic, but 30 days takes a while. Uh, the backers is all hard-coded as well. So that's one thing I want to address in this video, as well as a few other things to finalize this uh, app build. So let's generate a migration first. That's going to add that new backings count. So I'm going to say add backings count to oops to projects, and then it's going to be backings count integer. And I'm just going to run. Actually, going to open that one up. Um, we need a default of zero there. Default zero. There we go. I'll just migrate that. So then we'll need more logic in our actual controller app. So each time a user backs something, we need to actually like provide a count or update a count. And this isn't completely awesome, uh, but it does do the um, update of the count. So on destroy, I'm not worrying about it right now. So that doesn't de you know decrease. Sadly, you can maybe add that to your own app if you're following along. Um, but this one's going to end up being, I'm going to increase the account based on the project itself. So let's first figure that up. So we just do kind of another variable here, I think. So project updates. We'll have a backings count that we just added. It, it will be at project dot backings count dot next, which essentially means add one, and then current donation amount is going to be at project current donation amount. And we'll just add, you probably want to do this in the model, but plan dot amount divided by 100 to integer. There we go. And then we could just say, we have access to the product in this controller. So we could just say update, just like we do user. So project updates. And I'll probably move this current user update up closer. It's a lot in this controller, but it's doing the job so far. You probably want to do a little bit something more <laughs> uh, to enhance this for sure. So with that, we can go and get like say a backer and it's uh, something we can add to the app. So active project. Now, if you recall, we have, uh, where are we at? Two hundred here. We can just say project dot backings count. There we go. And that should be dynamic now. If we refresh the page, it's going to have just like zero because we didn't actually increment anything in the last purchase. But each time you would, it would work, seemingly. So now I want to be able to keep track of who's subscribed to to what. So right now my my user is subscribed or was subscribed to this. In fact, if I I'll just do it again. We we'll go back to that project. Um, it did back it. Notice that the count went up. The pledge of twenty dollars is there since that's twenty a month. That should probably be like pledged of this much per month, but you get the idea. Um, this button should be shouldn't be there though. I'm already subscribed to this plan, you know, so we should probably account for that. So let's do that. Uh, we're using Postgres already, so luckily we did that in the beginning. But this is a way to create an array um, column type on your database. It allows you to keep an, an array of records in one column, which is nice. So I'm going to create a generation. It's called migration um, add perk subscriptions to users. 
and we'll say perks subscriptions text and it's going to be text by default we're going to modify them the um migration to account for the new array concept I was talking about though. So let's go do that. So DB migrate, add perk subscriptions, text. Within that, it's gonna look like this. So, and this is required of Postgres is required for this to work. Defaults an empty array. So it's just like that. Array true and the de default empty. So then we'll just say rails DB migrate. Now, even more, we're adding to the controller again. Let's do that bit next. And essentially this is what's gonna do. Um, current user. Park subscriptions. Is equal to plan ID. If you recall, plan ID is our params plan. So the object of plan in that case, which is coming through from the link in the end. So if I were to go to subscribe to this, you'll see the plan is gonna be dummy John, John Smith perk, that, that identifier we added. That's kind of the same pattern we see in both our Stripe plan and whatnot. So that's the concept there. That's gonna keep track of that and we'll be seeing an array of that as a result. So if I go say subscribe again to this, which obviously you wouldn't wanna, but in fact, I'll cancel it and then subscribe again. Just so we're clear. All right, so let's go subscribe to this. Enter a card. Back for 20. A month. There we go, we've got the project there. There's two, it still counts for two backers. It's, it's basically just incrementing it. There's no deck in and um, if people unsubscribe. So I think you could make that more exact if you really want to. I just didn't have time. Um, so there's two subscriptions for some reason. I think it's because it's already subscribed. Um, but let's um, go to that user. Who is it? Me, WebCrunch, okay. Rails console user dot first. Notice the perk subscriptions column now has that perk in it and it's just the one. So if we just say user should return that array, which is cool. Uh, to delete an item from an array just willy nilly uh, on your own like that is the next step. We can do so from the um, controller. Uh, but first, I'm going to go back to that view. And if you remember, I commented some stuff out here. It was purchase perks. So we want to account for if someone did actually purchase something for one. Um, and if they did, we don't want to show them the same plan to resubscribe to. We want them to have different plans as a result if they want more than one. So purchase perks actually going to be a method that we create as a helper. And let's do that. And the projects helper. So we'll just say purchase perks. I think it was perk. Yeah. And then projects came through or perk, I think. Okay. So within that will be quite a bit of logic that makes that work, but um, it's nicer here than in the view. So We'll say user signed in and current user perk subscriptions include is a very nice thing to have in Ruby. It's just basically saying is this thing in this array and you can pass in what will be the perk identifier, which is the one we're adding for both the plan and, and everything else like we've been adding. So perk title dot parameterize and then that's perk underscore another interpolation is perk dot id so if this is the case we can go back to the idea page view looks like i have 
Um, it should be purchase perk there. There we go. So if that's the case, then we see this link in our settings that says, oh, go to your settings to manage that. And we have one to cancel here. So if we cancel that, while we're here, we still have that one in there. Settings, cancel that. Uh, okay. And then notice nothing's happening though, right? So what's happening is we're not destroying that from that array. It's still in that array. And that needs to happen in our destroy action. So let's do that next. Underneath the subscribed, we're going to do current user perk subscriptions. dot delete and then plan to remove is going to be the ID we delete from and then we still need to explicitly save it though so once you delete an item from an array it doesn't save immediately so if you do so it should work out so let's go ahead and create a um, a new project by John Smith that I can subscribe to so New project. Hey, like sixty thousand perk. A fifty. A one hundred. Okay, let's we'll start with those. Create those. Kicks that off. Here's those two plans. So I'll log out. Log in as the other guy. Go with that one. We can back this idea or this idea. So let's do this one. Cool. There's that project. Here's that there. Go under our settings. For some reason, it's showing up twice here. I'm trying to figure that out. Not quite sure, um, but it's still there. So if we were to delete that one, perk subscription delete plan to remove. Plan to remove. Okay, so doing the delete link here, we still need to pass in the um, updated ID. So let's do that. So the plan ID here in this case would be sub.plan.id which works I believe that's it so let's try that again cancel subscription still doing something weird subscription no such subscription I think I already removed it yeah so if we try it again are you sure delete that man what's going on Oh, okay. I forgot to add the variable to do that. So plan to remove equals params plan ID. Okay. So this is going to still bark because I did that. So let's um, purchase this one. If we buy this, we should be able to see it in our dash. And then if I cancel it, there we go, subscription canceled. And if we go back to our dash, we shouldn't see it there. For some reason, it's rendering twice. It wasn't doing that when my other app was being made, so I'm, I'm not 100% certain there. I think it might already just be in my subscriptions or something weird like that on Stripe. Um, but yeah, I'll maybe have to figure that one out. But that's essentially it, guys. So when it's removed we should be able to just go ahead and cancel the subscription if we want to back it again you see the buttons back there so I'll just do it one more time to confirm let's buy it we're backing that project if we go back to that that button should be in a different state this one's just an old old stale one so don't disregard it but if we get that go to our manage this now we have three for some reason. I think it's because it's, it's not quite deleting them on Stripe yet for whatever reason. Either way though, if we cancel one of these, 
it should all go away. When we go back to here, we'll be able to still do that. I think it's just because I've purchased it so many times and it's using my ID to link up to it. But hopefully that's useful, guys. I know the uh, destroying of the subscription wasn't 100% thorough, but the actual creation, I hope you got something out of. Um, and then also the connect concept of um, having a user who's connected to Stripe charge, get their um, interior platform fee, and then also just one that's um, a basic user can come in and charge and buy whatever they want to do. So let's try that one real quick, just uh, basic. And if I go and buy this, can I go and do it without even authenticating Stripe? I can. So that's the subscription. That's just a basic consumer. Um, if I go to my account, there's my subscription. I can still connect with Stripe and open my own store if I want to. Otherwise, I can cancel the subscription and be on my way. So that is it. It's nothing fancy, but it took a lot of work and hopefully you learned some things. I'd, I'd definitely invite you to take it from here and, and maybe um, worry or think we can enhance, enhance like things like testing. Um, obviously, I skipped that in this series. It's something I'd, I want to have, but my God, this stuff takes so much time. So uh, testing is something you should never uh, defer from if you're creating this on your own or on your own time and want a real life app working uh, tests are the way to catch those bugs that I've been seeing um, quicker. Um, around all of these charges and transactions, Stripe has events in the background that you can hook into. There's a Stripe events gem you can hook into and do things based on it. That could be either sending invoices or um, submitting web hooks to do certain things based on if someone cancels or their card goes, um, what's it called? their card is declined or something like that. Yeah. Um, more dynamic backing. So say instead of just a monthly rate, you can add a quarterly or a year or one time, um, that could be all f on the UI layer that gets, you know, passed down to the controller or model and then more. So, um, obviously the UI here kind of sucks. So if you want to extend that, you totally could and should, so hopefully you learned some things. Um, definitely let me know of any hiccups you might have. I wouldn't say this app's perfect, but I just wanted to kind of go give through a guide. I don't see much about Stripe Connect out there in the wild. So I wanted to at least give you a taste of it and recommend going deeper and, and doing better practices than I have in this. But I wanted to give you the best overview. So um, yeah, if you like this, appreciate a like or subscribe. Um, tell your friends, tell your family. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks for everything. All right. Peace. Hello Rails is my new course on Ruby on Rails. I'll teach you Ruby on Rails from the ground up. Visit hellorails.io for more information.